Hello, YouTube. Uh, now that we uh, managed to um, finish the model and also finish the excitations and the boundaries for this uh, uh, transformer, three phase transformer, it's now time for uh, doing the simulations and checking out the results and see if it's making sense or not. Um, of course, from this point, your application might be different than what I'm showing here. So this is just a point of reference. From this point, you can go ahead and change uh, the parts of the design that you want and uh, start uh, optimizing your transformer. Um, first thing that I want to show you is you want to do always a check a validation to check that everything is fine as you can see the result of the check shows that there is no problem in our design I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna run the simulations I've already run ran the simulation so uh, it will be very fast uh, it might take um, a while for you depending on what's your uh, CPU but uh, when it's finished uh, what the first thing you want to do is you want to look at the simulation the solution data that you got so as you as you know you define some parameters and those parameters are supposed to be the matrix that of the inductances that you are uh, looking forward to see them so um, you right click on the results and go on the solution data and uh, when you click on that you will get this uh, matrix with all these uh, inductance values um, note that it's very messy and uh, you can't like really get uh, good information from that but thanks to the post processing that we've done in defining the matrices now we have the option when you say the post processed you can get them all uh, in the groups that it's supposed to be meaning that we are putting these fellows here in three in these three guys in the, in the three groups so it will act as one and basically we now have three inductants to care about and therefore we will have all these uh, nine combinations for the inductance. As you know, the phase A phase A means that L11 of the inductance, the first uh, column of the E. And this one is a second um, self-inductance that you will see. And this is a third self-inductance for the phase C. If you want to know what's the inductance between the phase C and phase B, you look here at minus 6.9. One other thing that you have to take a look at is um, the, the reason that you have a minus here is because you have the phase difference. So when you have a phase difference, it will basically turn your inductance into the uh, capacitance. Uh, the phase difference comes from the three being the three phase. And uh, because of that, you get a negative value for the inductance. And also, um, you can also uh, interpret it as a difference of the, the the current so that uh, when you have the current for one phase going for example downside uh, the other phase is going up because of the phase difference of the three phase and uh, because of that you get two different it's a negative it's a two different currents therefore the L will be negative to compensate that um, the other thing that you can validate your design is you have to have a symmetric um, matrix here so as you can see, um, the uh, the one in the middle actually are the L11, the self inductances, and the the one that are not in the middle, like this guy is here or here or here or here or here, uh, these should be uh, basically um, symmetric, meaning that if you see a value here for phase C and um, for example ph phase A, it should be the same for phase A and phase C. So the inductance L12 is equal to L21 most of the time. So here you see the same values. And same here, for example, for the phase C and the uh, phase B and phase B and phase C, you see that the values are negative 6.948. Okay? Um, same thing for the other. So that's one thing that you want to check and make sure that it is right. Uh, the other thing that you want to check is... Um, we also, uh, other than the inductance, we can also check out the flux the linkage um, for whom, uh, actually I got like a, a couple of people asking about the flux leakage and how you can calculate that. So this is one way to calculate the flux leakage and you can see here the flux leakage of phase A equals this. So from the flux leakage you can get the inductance leakage uh, or leakage in inductance 
Um, so here's the flux leakage for the phase A, B, and C. And uh, if you say no post-processing, you can check out for all um, small coils as well. Um, one other thing that I was going to show you is, um, as you remember, we defined two matrices, matrix 1 and matrix 2. So in the matrix 2, we were, uh, let me go back to the inductance. Uh, in the matrix 2, uh, we had more uh, turns and also more um, branches. Uh, because we had like three, um, sorry, less branches and less turn. So uh, basically we had half the number of terms because it was 15 turns, not 30. And also for the branches we put uh, one instead of three. So uh, what will happen is uh, two to the power two times three to the power two, which is 36 times the inductance will uh, reduce. And as you can see here, the inductances here are um, 36 times lower than uh, the one that we had for the matrix one, almost. So this is 14.6. Uh, you divide it by um, 36, you get almost. Uh, just I'm trying to double check here. Yeah, you get 0 0.4055, which is 0 0.40704. So basically, it is uh, 36 times. Uh, smaller so that was another validation of what we've done as uh, our simulation so and you can see that you don't need to define two matrices of course you define one matrix of the parameters and you just uh, analyze that one matrix but here I was going to show you that if you define the matrix in a different way if you not if you change the number of the turns and also the uh, also the number of the branches it will do the post processing and I will you can see that it is showing the right results or what you are expecting for that. Okay, and um, till here we've done um, um, all these uh, different uh, simulation for um, the inductances. And uh, one can ask that uh, what is the difference between the eddy current and uh, and the magnetostatic. So in the magnetostatic, as I said, it's uh, basically calculate the inductance based on uh, having how much energy we have and then divide that by uh, the surface and we get the inductance, um, whether it's like um, um, incremental inductance or um, it's uh, on the point, in the inductance on the point. Um, however, um, if you need to do uh, different, um, like more um, in detail analysis, and um, so you know that this this inductance that you can see here is for uh, lower frequencies. So if you want to have it for the higher frequencies, and you want to also check out what is the effect of the eddy currents, you will go probably with the eddy current simulations, not the magnetostatic simulations. Um, one uh, point is if you are using Leeds wire. And uh, the Leeds wire, the purpose of the Leeds wire is to basically um, drastically reduce the effect of the eddy current. You do not need to uh, go to the internet to search for how I can model the Leeds wire. The Leeds wire is very hard to model, and you wouldn't gain, gain anything by carefully modeling the Leeds wire and spending a lot of time to simulating the results. Um, the only thing you wanted to do is you want to get rid of the eddy current effects because basically that's what Leeds wire does, and uh, uh, that means that instead of doing the eddy current, uh, which uh, simulations you just go in the magnetostatic uh, simulation and do your simulation the magnetostatic type uh, that is one hint for the people who are using the Leeds wire in the design